Hello viewers and welcome back. Thank you for your subscriptions, thumbs ups, and likes. Today we have a 2011 Hyundai Sonata here. Customer says he is getting a scraping sound from the back end. But first, it's time for a mini rant. Viewers, I plead and beg with you, if you take your car to a repair shop to be driven, test drove, diagnosed, repaired, anything that's gonna involve driving your vehicle, please, please, put just a little bit of gas in it. Okay, rant's over, let's get started. An extremely short test drive did confirm the sound is coming from the left rear. After pulling the wheel, our problem's pretty obvious. These brake pads are shot. Gonna round up some tools, show you how to change the pads and rotors on the back of your Hyundai Sonata. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is remove our park and brake adjuster plug. Just a little rubber plug that goes in the rotor. We're gonna take that out. Now typically on these, you'll reach in there with a screwdriver and you'll back your adjuster wheel off. These Hyundais are a little different. It's gonna be best if you use a 90 degree pick because we're gonna reach in the hole, we're actually gonna hook onto the star wheel adjuster and pull it back towards us. I'll show you a little better once we get the rotor off. Just go ahead and turn that until it doesn't turn anymore. I'm gonna use my impact driver next. I'm gonna remove the screws out of the rotors. These are great tools to have. Not only does it smash in onto the screw head, but it also rotates it at the exact same time. You can pick one of these up at, well, just about anywheres. And the good part is you don't have to use them just on screws. They either have a 3 8 or a half inch drive head. So if you don't have an actual impact wrench at home, these are the next best thing. Grab your 14 millimeter and take the brake caliper bracket, or the brake caliper bolts off. Once you got those off, pull the brake caliper towards you to compress the piston slightly, and then remove the caliper. Now at this point, in most brake jobs, we pull the brake caliper bracket off. However, Hyundai really raised the bar in the engineering feat with this one. We've got one brake caliper bolt right out in the open. And we've got the second one behind this control link. Pretty ridiculous, Hyundai. I give you the thumbs down. Don't be discouraged though. It makes the job difficult, but not impossible. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do, you have to support the lower control arm with the spring on it. And what I mean by support it is just stick a, stick a floor jack under it and just put just enough tension on it to hold it. You don't need to compress the suspension or get carried away there. If you got the car on jack stands, take your floor jack, stick it underneath this, we're gonna remove the bolt out of the shock, and then we're gonna remove the nut and bolt out of the control arm. They all use a 19 millimeter. Go ahead and pry that shock back just a little bit. It doesn't have to go far. That's about it right there. Use a brass punch and a hammer to finish driving out this bolt. And the only reason we had to move the shock is because they didn't allow enough clearance just to take this bolt out. Once you've got the bolt out, we'll just pry this control link back just a little bit. You only lack, that, that's the part that bothers me about this. If you reach behind here and try to wrench this bolt out of the caliper bracket, just stop right now because you're gonna lack about a sixteenth of an inch. And then you're gonna to think to yourself, well, I'll just wiggle it off with the rotor. It won't work. That's about all you need. 
Now that we've gone through that whole circus, we can reach behind here with our 12 millimeter wrench. Bust that caliper bracket bolt loose. And then you've got the grueling task of wrenching it the entire way. I went and swapped out for a ratchet wrench. Way to go, Hyundai. Now that we've got our bracket off, we gotta get the rotor off. We've already gone through and removed the screws. We've backed off the brake adjuster. Rotor seized on there. I've seen in a lot of videos guys using slide hammers to hook over the edge of the rotor. Never ever do that. I mean, in this case you could because the rotor is junk. If you intend on reusing it or taking it to a machine shop to get machined, don't do that. Just hit on the face of the rotor here with a hammer. Just go around and just tap it. It'll come off. One, two, barbecue. Now that we've got the rotor off, let's have a look at the star wheel. See how that works. This is what I was backing off with my 90 degree pick. So you can see simply when I was in there with the pick, I was, well, let me tighten this up to show you. So to tighten this adjuster, we're gonna use a downward motion. And what this does, this activates these parking brake shoes, allowing them to spread open and take up the gap inside the rotor. Now when I was in there with my 90 degree pick, this is what I was doing. Of course you couldn't see it, but I was actually just hooking it on and then just pulling it. Just with that action right there to back it off. Like I say, trying to get in there with a screwdriver, it just didn't allow you enough room to really cam those up. So I found that a 90 degree pick works the best to rotate this adjuster. Go ahead and have a look at your park and brake shoes. Make sure they're not falling off the backing plates. If they do, if they delaminate from what we call rust jacking, the actual friction material will be falling right off the metal backing plate. So just have a good look at those. I think these ones look good. Now use some brake parts cleaner. Let's just clean all the dust and junk out of there. Once all your brake cleans dried, let's apply a little bit of lube to this parking brake actuator. We'll just keep that from seizing up. Once you've got that done, shove a couple napkins behind the hub, get a little never seize on it. Keep that rotor from seizing up on there again. Before you spray any never seize on there, wipe any never seize on there, make sure that rotor is free of rust. Even one little flake of rust on there, a lot of rust buildups, gonna make this rotor have some lateral run out. So make sure you clean that off good. Let's take our new rotor, gonna clean out the inner drum portion for the parking brake with a little bit of brake parts cleaner. Make sure you wipe all the oil out. Line up your screw holes and install it on the hub. So before we get too far, we want to go ahead and readjust our parking brake. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll this all the way down to the bottom, reach in there with our pick, we're going to go ahead and just start tightening this up. And we're going to move that star adjuster until we can't move it anymore. That way we know the parking brake shoes are all the way out and seated against the rotor. You can see it's locked the rotor up. Now just go ahead and back them off a few clicks. 
you should hear them dragging slightly. When you spin it, it should roll at least one rotation on its own. So there, simple as that. Let's take our brake caliper bracket, remove the old hardware. If you're gonna reuse it, what I really don't suggest doing, but uh, in the circumstance that you are, remove it, but do it a little more carefully. What we need to do now is, we've gotta clean all this rust off. Right in here where the brake pads go. The ear of the brake pad has to be able to slide through this channel. It also has to be able to, uh, you know, slide through there once the brake hardware is installed. That's usually what ruins the pads on these. We get a little bit of rust, rust squeezes the hardware, hardware squeezes the pad, pad sees up. With that being said, you gotta do whatever you have to do to get that out. You can use a square file, file all that rust out of there. I'll be honest with you, if you just go at this with a wire brush, all it's gonna do is polish up the rust. So here I use a sandblaster. So I'm just gonna throw these in my sandblast cabinet. I'm gonna blow all that rust off there, get it right back to the bare metal. I suggest you do the same. Like I say, probably if I didn't have a sandblaster, the method I would use uh, would be a file uh, because I think that's going to effectively move the rust the best. Now that you got your caliper brackets clean, like I say, if you can, take it right back to bare metal. We're going to take and apply a little bit of uh, brick caliper grease. And we want to apply that just inside the bracket here. What our hope is with this is to prevent that from rusting and squeezing on the brake pal or on the uh, hardware there again, squeezing the pad and making it seize up. Now that you have it lubed on both sides, go ahead and reinstall your hardware. Highly recommend putting new hardware on every time you do a brake job. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and install our pads. On this model, the squealer goes on the inside of the bracket. We're going to go ahead and just line those up, slide them through. They slide on relatively easily. If you have to force it, use a hammer, grind the pad, anything of that nature, there's something wrong. There's more than likely still some rust buildup in your bracket. A good quality pad, good hardware, brackets cleaned up, it'll slip right in no problem. Now we're going to do the same thing with our outboard pad. We're going to slip that right in the hardware, get it lined up straight. And now we're going to go reinstall our bracket. I forgot to mention, before we reinstall our bracket, let's go ahead and pop our caliper slide pins out. Make sure they've got a sufficient amount of lube on them. Both of these still look good. Now we've got the fun part. We've got to realign our uh, control arm here, our control link or lateral link, or I don't know their technical name, I'd have to look it up. I'm gonna use an alignment bar. We stick it in the hole, it's gonna realign it. That's what it does. You should probably have a tapered punch, you know, something that has this taper to it. It's really gonna help you. This bushing sits in here relatively tight. You'll see when you go to pry it out. That's why I didn't remove it all the way because uh, it's gonna help us with this process right here. Now it's lined up, let's go ahead and try to insert the bolt. If you forgot, it's gonna be the longer the two bolts you removed. These can be a real pain to get started again. I would say once you get the alignment bar in, it may be worth actually just sticking the bolt in backwards to make sure everything's lined up. Take it back out, then reinsert it from the back side. Okay. 
There it is. push the piston and the rest of the way on our brake caliper here. You need to be cautious. These pistons are phenolic, or what they would consider a phenolic piston. What that translates to from mechanic talk, that means crumbly, plasticky crap. So let's go ahead and grab one of your old brake pads. Stick it on there. Just use a big pair of channel locks if you got them. Give that a little squeeze and it pushes right in. Be careful using just regular channel locks up against the surface of that phenolic piston because it will crumble. What we're gonna do next is, you know, after you've gone through and made sure your caliper's good and cleaned out, if it's not, use a wire brush, go in here, get everything brushed off, use some brake parts cleaner and flush it out. You're gonna wanna take some brake caliper grease, the same stuff we used on our bracket. We're gonna apply it to the ears on the caliper here. Basically what you're going to want to do is you want to grease anything that's going to have a metal to metal contact. This is going to reduce noise and prevent rust. So we're also going to do the piston, even though that's a, what we would consider a phenolic piston or plastic. It's always a good habit just to do the piston and do the ears on the caliper. And then just reinstall the caliper. Hold it up and start the top one first. Just get a bolt started in it. Then just let it slide down and around. That's going to prevent making a great big mess with any of the grease you have on it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Put your wheel back on. Torque it down so it puts even pressure on the rotor. Hop in the car, pump up the brakes take it for a little test drive. So we learned a couple things from this hopefully. Hopefully the first thing we learned is how to put the back brakes here on your Hyundai Sonata. And number two, please just put a little bit of gas in the car. So that's it for now viewers. Appreciate you watching. I thank you for your thumbs up and likes. I ask that you subscribe to our channel to stay current with our repair videos we put out almost daily. Until next time.